Hello my dear friends, with you Maxim Fadi and today I will speak about Museum of the Vatican. I visited Italy for the first time in 2011. My trip included an excursion week and a week of rest at the sea. Our plane arrived at the airport of the reserved city of Rimini. The first city to visit was the capital of Italy, Rome. I was very impressed with the Vatican City, state and its museums. The Vatican museums were founded by two popes of the 18th century, Clement XVI and Pius VI, who first opened to the public collection of works of art for the purpose of cultural education of the people. The first museum complex therefore bears the name of its patron the Museum of Pius Clementino. It is not better to try to see everything at once, but to focus on the specific things you want to see. Otherwise, there is a risk of missing something important. Our guide to the Vatican museums gave the group headphones for the tour and we get to the yard which is called the Yacht of the Pine Cone. The Yacht of the Pine Cone, or the Yacht of the Pine Tree, named after a huge pine cone made of bronze and decorating the area in front of the Belvedere Palace, is another attraction of the Vatican. Initially, the gilded bronze cone was placed on the field of Mars, but was moved to a new location in 1608. This unusual element, whose lower part is decorated with basque leaf depicting athletes of Rome, acts and as a fragment crowning an antique fountain, on both sides of which there are figures of bronze peacocks, and in the center there is a basque leaf of a head that exudes water. Another agricultural masterpiece of the courtyard is a grandiose pin golden bulb with a diameter of 4 meters and located in the center of the square. It was created by the Italian sculptor Arnaldo Pomodoro in 1990. The master's idea was to reflect the current negative that humanity brings to the world around it. In the design of a large bulb symbolize the universe with gaping ribs and having a mirror surface, there is a small bulb represent our planet. The image captures the global processes that accompany the flow of being on a planetary scale or at a given time. The size of the composition shows the volume of the universe and the people refre reflected in the bulb inextricably connected with life in it. Vatican museums form museums with an extensive collection of Greek and Roman antique art. The center of the complex is the Pius Clement Museum. In, in this museum there are the most famous sculptures, statue of Laocoon, Apollo and Erno. The Leocon group was made in 30 BC by three Rhodi sculptors, who probably copied the original 2nd century BC. It depicts a legendary scene from the Enid, the children priest Leocon and his two sons frightened to see serpent. The episode represents a thin revenge for the fact that the priest of Apollo Leocon tried to get inside the host to Troy and warn the inhabitants. In the history of art, the discovery of Alokun was a turning point that influenced entire generation of artists, among them are Michelangelo, Tizian, El Greco and Andrea Serto. Earlier I saw this sculpture on the end of Rhodes. See my video about Greece. This statue, which shows the river god in a traditional reclining pose, dates from the time of the Emperor Hadrian and was inspired by a Greek prototype. In the early 16th century it was displayed in the courtyard of statue, where it was part of a fountain 
the basin of which is a sarcophagus dating from 170 180 AD decorated with scenes of battles between Greeks and Amazons. The work has been dated to midway through the 2nd century AD and is considered to be a copy of an original bronze statue of 333-20 BC by Leo Caris, one of the artists who worked on the mausoleum at Helicarnassus. I used to see this sculpture on the page of the textbook History of the Ancient World. You can imagine my excitement. Nearby is a round hall repeating the shape of the Parthenon. Its floor is full of Roman mosaics from the beginning of the 3rd century and with images of sea monsters and mythical heroes. It was found in Otricoli, a small town in Umbria. From there they also brought a copy of the bust of Neptune by the Greek sculpture Brisit of the 4th century BC. In the center of the hall, a giant porphyry pool of Nero. Statues are installed in niches around the perimeter. The most impressive of them is the bronze statue of Hercules of the 2nd century Ed. At the center of the room is a huge red porphyry basin which has circumference of 13 meters. The basin must once have embellished one of the large public spaces for Imperial Rome. Of course, it is impossible to see all the museum in one visit, but I hope to do it the next one. With you was Maxim Fadiev. See you soon.